China has suspended tariff concessions on 128 items of U.S. products including pork and fruits. Beijing has decided to impose a tariff of 15% on 120 items on fruits and related products. 25% of tariffs have been imposed on 8 items including pork. China says that the decision is a countermeasure in response to a previous U.S. move to slap tariffs on steel and aluminium imports. U.S. government has proposed to collect social media identities from people who seek entry into U.S. According to the proposals filed by State Department, it would require most immigrant and non-immigrant visa applicants to list all social media identities they have used in the past five years. This comes as a part of President Donald Trump's promise to institute extreme wetting of foreigners entering U.S. soil. Amid tweets from President Donald Trump that the international border between both countries is becoming more dangerous, a caravan of migrants estimated at over 1,500 people is making its way through Mexico towards the United States. Many migrants hail from Honduras, El Salvador and Guatemala. President Donald Trump said on Twitter that there will not be a deal on legalizing the status on young adult immigrants known as dreamers. In his Twitter banter, Trump also claimed that U.S.-Mexico border is becoming more dangerous and threatened to kill the NAFTA deal, which is currently being renegotiated with Mexico and Canada. A protester taking part in a march in Sacrament against the police shooting of Stephon Clark was struck and injured by a police vehicle. Video of the incident showed protesters surround two police vehicles. Officers warned protesters to move several times before the incident took place. Woman was later rushed to a hospital and is now in stable condition. Mexico's ruling party presidential candidate Jose Antonio Mied kicked started his campaign with a promise of greater transparency in the government despite his reputation as a clean politician. Mied's campaign has struggled to gain traction. His association with the ruling party and reluctance to criticize its performance has made it hard to position himself as a candidate of change. Mexico's presidential front-runner Andres Manuel López Obrador launched his campaign close to the U.S. border. Obrador, who is a leftist politician and a head of the National Regeneration Movement Party, spoke about the wall and the NAFTA during his hour-long address. At least seven police officers were killed inside a prison in Mexico's troubled state of Veracruz. Officers had entered the detention center in Toma after inmates were reported to have broken free from the cells during an operation to relocate some highly dangerous inmates after authorities claimed that they died of suffocation after inmates set some mattresses on fire. Expelled Russian diplomats and their family members have returned to Moscow from the U.S. The aeroplane transportation expelled officials landed Nukovo Airport outside of Moscow on Sunday. U.S. President Donald Trump last week had ordered the expulsion of 60 Russians from the United States and closed the Russian consulate in Seattle in response to a nerve agent attack last month in Britain. The governor of Russia's Kemerovo region, Aman Tuliev, has resigned over a mole fire that killed more than 60 people last month. Tuliev, in a video post, said stepping down was the only course of action possible. President Vladimir Putin accepted his resignation. Syrian rebels defending the last rebel bastion near Damascus began evacuating the town of Duma on Sunday. The evacuation comes after Syrian government approved to build a local council in the city that will run its affairs after rebels withdrew. 
Venezuela arrested five state police officials for their alleged role in a riot and fire that killed 68 people in an overcrowded police station cell. Venezuela's opposition blames the tragedy on Maduro's inability to perform Venezuela's lawless jails where inmates strut around with weapons and orchestrated crimes from cells. A Syrian baby who lost an eye in an airstrike in eastern Ghouta was brought to Turkey. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan met with family and held baby Karim in his hands. The president also met with two young Syrian sisters from eastern Ghouta, Noor and Ella, who were renowned for their tweets depicting their plight before being evacuated from the rebel-held town. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan called his Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu a terrorist escalating an exchange of insults that started after he criticized Israel's lethal military response to a demonstration on the Gaza border. Speaking at a rally, Erdogan lambasted Netanyahu for accusing Turkey of indiscriminately bombing civilian population for years and called Israel's invaders. Israel's defense minister has rejected calls for an inquiry into the killing of 15 Palestinians during protest at the Gaza-Israel border. Avigdor Lieberman, while rejecting the criticism of Israel's actions, said soldiers along the Gaza frontier deserve a medal and did what was necessary to protect the border. Egypt and Jordan condemned killing of 15 Palestinians by Israeli soldiers during a demonstration at the Gaza-Israel border on Friday. During the joint press conference, leaders of both the nation called Israel's action and aggression against the innocent. Abiy Ahmed has become the new Prime Minister of Ethiopia. The announcement comes after ruling coalition voted for Ahmed following the resignation of Heli Mariam. Deselgan last month. Abiy won over 60% of all votes in the 180-member council. Sierra Leonean Christians celebrated Easter on Sunday, a day after voting was held in a poll to choose a successor to President Ernest Bai Koroma. The country is one of the poorest in the world and expectations are high from the new leader. Churchgoers on the day of Easter hoped the new government would also help the economy rise from the ashes of the civil war. Around 300 people in North Kenya gathered to commemorate Sudan, the last male northern white rhino who recently died at the age of 45. The attendees were of the view that wildlife is a valuable asset to the country and the death of Sudan acts as a reminder that more efforts must be made to protect endangered wildlife. In an audio message, former Catalan President Carles Puigdemont encouraged Catalans to continue pursuing the cause for regional independence. He urged the people of Catalonia to fight for independence in a non-violent way. The message was recorded by a German politician who met with the exile leader in the prison. Dieter Diem, the German left party politician who left who met Puigdemont in prison said that the former Catalan president fears physical harm if he is sent to a Spanish prison. Deem also said that Puigdemont appeared to be very healthy and in a cheerful mood. Hundreds of protesters gathered near Berlin's iconic Brandenburg Gate in support for Carles Puigdemont holding placards and Catalan flags. Protesters demanded release of former Catalan President Puigdemont, who is in a German jail, faces charges of rebellion in Spain that could lead to 25 years in prison. Residents in China's eastern Jiangsu province woke up to an enchanting site of adviction fog in Xiong County on Sunday. Landmark buildings including the Gushish Pavilion, Gushu Bridge and the Millennium Tower were all shrouded in frog, with the building's 
appearing to like a mirage. The advocation fog in China usually occurs during winter and spring in northern coastal cities. Sunday marked the first anniversary of China's Xiongan New Area, which is designed to become the core driving force for coordinated developments in the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei region. According to officials, the new area has scored rapid progress in the past year. The first project, Xiongan Civil Service Center, is expected to open for public in two days. China and Vietnam have promised to seek a closer synergy between their development strategies and continue to carry forward their traditional friendship. The pledge came during a meeting between Vietnamese President Tran Dai Quang and former minister Wang Yi, who is currently on an official visit to the country. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi urged restraint in disputes in China Sea. Now, Wang Yi said that China and Vietnam should better manage maritime disputes through talks and move to jointly make use of the South China Sea. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un among the hundreds in Pyongyang attended performances by South Korean K-pop singers. Kim Jong-un is the first North Korean leader to attend a South Korean performance in the capital. Kim Jong-un was seen clapping in tune to some of the songs and later took photographs with the performers as well. The U.S. tech giant Apple Incorporated and its uh, subsidiary in South Korea are facing the third-class action lawsuit for purposefully slowing down older models of iPhones. Now, out of 64,000 South Korean iPhone users have launched the country's biggest ever class action lawsuit demanding that Apple pay around 12 million U.S. dollars in total in compensation. Apple has denied the claims. A school in southern Finland is trying out robot educators. A robot Elias is able to understand and speak 23 languages and is equipped with uh, software. Makes a robot understand students' requirements and helps it behave in a way that encourages learning. Myanmar's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi urges nation to stay united as the country faces challenges at home and abroad. Her speech for unity marks two years since her party swept to power in historic vote. However, during her speech, Suu Kyi made only a passing reference to the Rohingya crisis in the Rakhine state. Nobel Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai told her relatives that she admired the bravery of the people in Pakistan's Swat Valley for fighting against extremism. Malala visited her hometown Swat Valley on Saturday, almost six years after Taliban gunmen shot her for advocating education. During an address, Malala urged people to learn from past experiences so that the next generation will go to schools and receive an education. Britain's Queen Elizabeth and other members of the royal family attended an annual Easter service on Sunday at St. George's Chapel in Windsor. Prince William and his wife Catherine, who are due to have their third child in April, also attended the service. The royals were not accompanied by the children Prince George or Princess Charlotte. Britain's Prince Harry and his American fiancé Meghan Markle have chosen a London florist to arrange the flower decorations for their wedding in late spring. Philippa Craddock will use seasonal blooms from around Windsor to decorate the ceremony venue, including white garden roses, peonies and foxgloves. The most anticipated wedding is on May 19th.
In an attempt to break a world record, several hundred swimsuit-clad Russian skiers and snowboarders hit the slopes of Sochi. Around 1,800 people participated in the event wearing bikinis, swim shorts and costumes. While most people in Germany spend their Easter Sunday thinking about chocolate, eating with family, the villagers of Hora Hossen took part in the annual egg throwing competition. A plenty of people brave cold spring weather for the competition. The egg throwing tradition in Hora Hossen goes back more than 80 years and has been drawing local families ever since. Tiny Easter hunters and their parents trudge through the snow of mountain camping one in search of chocolate and colored eggs where normally only climbers, hikers or hang gliders hang out. Several children enjoyed Easter looking for eggs despite the cold. The mortal remains of the 38 Indians killed by Islamic State terrorists in Iraq are in 2014 are expected to reach India later today. The remains were handed over by Iraqi Health Ministry to the Indian Embassy. Minister of State for External Affairs General V.K. Singh reached Iraq on Sunday to bring back the bodies to the country. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on External Affairs will deliberate upon various issues related to Indians working abroad, including safety and security of those in conflict zones. The members of the panel believe that there is a need to develop a legislative framework to ensure security of Indians working abroad. Internet services have been suspended in Jammu and Kashmir Shopian and Anantnag districts after 12 terrorists were neutralized in separate encounters on Sunday. Schools have also been declared closed for safety purposes. Separatist leaders Saeed Ali Shah Gilani, Mirwais Umar, Farooq Yasin Malik have been put under house arrest. Security has also been heightened up in parts of Kashmir. Civic authorities in Shimla are reviving step wells and ponds as traditional water resources to cater to water needs of the residents in the area. The hill station's water sources have absolutely depleted over the years due to scarcity in the annual rainfall and snowfall rate. In order to prevent a drought-like situation in the town, the government has decided to revive 13 out of 47 step wells. Petrol price hit a four-year high of 73.73 rupees, while diesel reached an all-time high of 64.58 rupees a litre in Delhi. The state-owned oil marketing firms on Sunday raised the petrol and diesel prices by 18 paise per litre in Delhi. The petrol in Delhi now costs 73.73 rupees, the highest since September 2014 when rates had hit 76.06 rupees. A case has been registered against the owner of a hotel building that collapsed in Indore that killed 10 people. Shankar Pariyani faces charges of culpable homicide and attempt to commit culpable homicide of the Indian Penal Code after the family of deceased hotel manager Harish Soni said that he had warned Pariyani of the building's collapse, which was over 50 years old.